Okay, so I wasn't sure if I wanted to make a video on this. I don't know, drama is not something that I necessarily want to make videos on, but I think as somebody who has been a, like a long-term Niji fan, like almost, like pretty, pretty early? It was 2020, like pretty early on in um, Niji Ian's lifespan. I think I remember starting, I started watching them like March 2022, so like quite early on. Um, and so this was, uh, you know, people in my Discord letting me know, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to make a video on it, but I think just as somebody who is quite a big Niji Sanji fan, somebody who has had the members kind of support me and, and you know, gone to my streams and some of the members know me, I kind of want to, like, see what uh, this is all about. But former Niji Sanji VTuber speaks out, um, it's probably Seiyu. I don't know anyone else who's going to speak out like that. She feels betrayed. That being... Yeah. I mean, I don't really know who else would have talked about that. Like, being betrayed is, like, only... Like, oh, you know, I don't know anybody else would speak out besides Seiyu. Um... Sayu Synchronicity, an Sayu. indie VTuber, formerly a corporate VTuber, as previously she was Zion Lanza before her termination from Niji Sanji English earlier this year. This indie VTuber now speaking on stream about her experiences with the company, beginning with her problems as an indie, and what led her to join a corporation. It really does feel like I'm not big enough to have rights or to have any respect, you know? And that was part of the reason I wanted to join the other co corporations, you know? It's sad to admit, that's why I really want to be there. I was really disappointed that I couldn't be there because I was happy putting some distance between myself and some of the people who are watching because like I didn't have to deal with it. You know, I didn't have to deal with it. It wasn't my problem. I could say something and people would respect it. But now if I say something, I'm just another person and nobody- Wait, she, one of the reasons she joined was because she wanted to be respected? I don't really, I don't really understand what she means by that because like I feel like you can- like, respect is something that you have to earn. Like, I don't understand this, like, th what she's saying by it. Like, is she saying that one of the reasons why she joined the company was because she wanted to be respected? I mean, like, you have to, in, n no matter what situation you are in, if you are in a big corporation or not, you have to earn that respect. Getting into that company, you still have to do things in order to gain respect within that company. And I, I get what she's kind of saying about feeling small and maybe feeling insignificant by being an indie and having that validation of a bigger company can probably, you know, give you a, a better sense of confidence in yourself or a sense of feeling like my opinions, uh, my opinions matter more to people. But that being said, you know, still being small and indie, you can still have respect. People can still respect you. And joining a big company does not just mean you're automatically going to be respected. You have to earn respect in no matter what situation you're in, no matter what platform you have. Like, you, we see big creators who aren't respected. Like, your size does not equal to respect right? Being a big creator does not mean you're going to be respected. Being in the biggest feature of a company does not automatically mean people are going to respect you and your opinions. You can't just say whatever the fuck you want and expect there not to be backlash. You've seen so many massive creators receive backlash because um, it's deserved, you know? There's, like, that sounds like a sense of entitlement, you know? It sounds entitled to be like, oh, I want to join a big company because I want to be respected by people. You know, I want respect, and I think if I join that, I'm going to be respected. Like, no. It's like, to a certain extent, yes. But in order to gain the respect of your peers and to gain the respect of the, that community, and that said that, you know, that um, community within that company, you have to earn that. You have to earn that respect. You have to work on that, like in everything else. Nobody cares. People think I'm joking or people just constantly make fun of me. A certain other corporation didn't appreciate me being me when I thought... ...or people just constantly make fun of me. A certain other... I mean, 
I feel like that's 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 always going to I'm I'm sorry, but I feel like that in like that in essence is kind of when you are putting yourself out there publicly, you are going to have naysayers and people um you know say something about it and and she said the company had an issue with me being me and that you wanted to find a company that respected that i mean i i feel like in a sense there may be a reason for that right that there's a i feel like there could be possibly a reason as to why if you're joining multiple companies or if there's multiple times where people quote unquote aren't respecting quote unquote aren't respectful of the way that you are i feel like inherently there could be an issue there there could inherently be an issue of the way that you are obviously um i don't feel like you know people should you know people should be to, to a certain extent people should be themselves people should be allowed to express themselves in a way they want to express themselves but that is to a certain point because if you if your way of expressing yourself and your way of you know making jokes is, is at the expense of other people then i don't necessarily agree with that way of expressing yourself there's always a, a line i think there's a boundary that you need to set for yourself and as a public figure and as somebody online you need to be aware of that and you need to when you do cross that line and cross that boundary you need to take accountability for that and grow as a human being and be better and not it's it it, it it just sounds like stubbornness it sounds like entitlement and stubbornness if you're just like oh one company don't appreciate me for the way i acted then i got like some backlash for that so i'm gonna move on to another company and f and what expect that there's not going to be backlash or hate or whatever by the way you're acting if you act the exact same way and you aren't quote appreciated because of your actions how is how, how an office going to a different company going to change any of that it's not like if you don't change your behavior the exact same thing's going to happen again and that kind of just proves to a certain extent if you're going from one company to another and the exact same thing happens there could be and how it could be you that that and how it could be a you issue and not a company issue the corporation didn't appreciate me being me when i thought that somebody had finally thought that i was cool or good if i was some corporate feature or whatever you guys wouldn't you know people wouldn't be able to make the, so many of those jokes and that is the one thing that's really nice about that and it sucks that i have to be the one to say it but it really sucks a lot of the time you know sometimes you just want to play a game and not have everybody talk about everything else that is the one thing that's nice about having those kinds of corporate chats because everyone pays attention to what you do people care about what you're doing on the screen when you're an indie no one cares you know and it's i'm sorry but i don't it baffles me and i don't understand how she can be like like oh you know like i just want to like make my jokes and they appreciate me and like appreciate the i want i just want to be myself i just want to express myself and make those jokes it's like no no you can't just say whatever the fuck you want. That's not how the world works. I'm sorry, but if your jokes come at the expense of other people, and if your jokes are not funny and are hurting other people, that's not a joke. That's not funny. That like you need to change that. And I think that that shows stubbornness. That shows a sense of not taking accountability for yourself and for your actions like come on suck it's always been like that this indie vtuber going on to talk about how she feels backstabbed by other talents within the company you know i really loved that group i really loved the people in that group It sucked so much to be backstabbed by so many of them when I put, I did so much behind the scenes for them and I did so much 
to show them that I loved them and that I cared. Even though the company was going down and even though different generations were going down, that generation was flopping, you know? I knew, I knew it was. You know, because I've been in indie for so long. I've been doing my own statistics. I was learning, you know, I learned how a lot of things worked, you know, and I learned how a lot of analytics and things worked and I taught them a lot of what I knew. And not a single person could say something nice. Continuing on, Synchronicity would talk. What did she say? A lot of analytics and things worked, and I taught them a lot of what I knew. And not a single person could say something nice. I just don't get how everyone that, like, no, well, not really everyone, but all of these people are backstabbing me. I've done so much for them, and they never said a single nice thing about me. If they're all, like, they're all backstabbing you, then I feel like, right, there has to be a reason for that. There's not going to be, quote unquote, multiple people turning their backs to you because I don't think they don't give a fuck about you at all. I don't think, I, I, I don't imagine that none of them care literally at all or they hated you or something. I don't see that. And they're like, a lot of them just turn their backs to you and backstab you. And, and you're, t and you're saying there's not like, you know, and you're saying that, oh, they just backstabbed you. That to me would kind of say, okay, well, what's the reason for that? Why would they turn their backs on you? How is it multiple people? How is it all of these people? It's not one person. It's it's multiple. It's all of these. It's all these people. You know, when you're in a group, when you're in a in a, a group, when you're in, you know, you have a friend group and. All of your friends are turning your backs to you. There has to be a reason within you inherently. There has to be a reason for that. Why would they stab you in the back for no reason? Why would they do that? Why? I don't get that. I don't understand why they would stab you in the back for absolutely no reason at all. That just doesn't make logical sense. Um, doesn't make logical sense at all. Continuing on, Synchronicity would talk about the deep connections that she had made within Niji Sanji. I grew from nothing. I know what it's like, you know? A lot of people who became corporate VTubers do not know what it's like being an indie, you know? That I don't really necessarily feel like that's fair. Like, it's a fair assumption to make. Like, is she, like, is she saying, oh, like, they don't know what, you know, they don't know what it was like, you know, like, they don't know what, what I went through, you know, being an indie and struggling so hard, like, of course, like, yeah, but I feel like that's unfair to some of the other talents and saying that, like, it, it, it kind of gives me off the vibe, like, are you saying that they're less deserving? Maybe not in that sense, but is she saying that she, like, oh, like, oh, I worked, like, harder for this than they did? They didn't work as hard as I did, or... Because, like, there's other avenues. There, there, are, other, there are other avenues of growing your talent and being just as deserving in other avenues. You don't have to be an indie VTuber to be able to grow and and learn and gain skills and grow as a content creator in order to to have a company acknowledge you and see you. you like and that does not mean that they didn't work just as hard as you did but in a different way and in a different avenue i just don't really think that's a fair that's a fair thing to say if that makes sense it's like, you know, a lot of people who became corporate VTubers do not know what it's like being an indie, you know? I don't even care at this oh, point. But, okay, I guess what she, I guess she's saying like, 
being an indie, okay? Well, I guess she's saying, like, they don't, they don't get what it's like being an indie VTuber specifically, okay? I guess in that sense, okay, that... He had made within Niji Sanji. I grew from nothing. I know what it's like, you know? A lot of people who became corporate VTubers do not know what it's like being an indie. You know? Okay, okay. She said, like, they don't know what it's like being an indie. Okay. Okay, that became. I don't even care at this point, man, you know? Were they allowed to? Yeah. Yeah, they were. They were allowed to at least not you know, Kotoka said that she couldn't even wish her well. She couldn't even wish Zion well. Like, on stream is what she said. I saw her in person and became friends with her in private before we were ever we ever had anything to do with each other. I went out of my way to meet up and tell and teach her secrets and tell her things before, you know, before the debut. That just really sucked. I loved her. I actually loved her a lot. I saw her as one of my best friends. Same with Finana. Yeah. I just, I just feel like this just feels like, in a sense, like, like she's not taking accountability because for, like, you know, if you were close with that, if you're close with her, you became, like, you know, you met each other in real life, you became friends. Why would she just turn around? and backstab you for no reason at all. We literally know what some of those things that you did and you're undermining those things by saying that, oh, it was just these nuts jokes. It was not, it was literally not just these nuts jokes. Hex talked about how the, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like, you know, um, but the, 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 what, Zion joked about and how that had an impact on Hex based off of his personal experiences with that and that is crossing the line and that's hurtful to an entire community of people because that is a, a joke that is way too far and the fact that she undermines that as just these nuts jokes kind of shows to me that she still isn't taking accountability for her actions or she doesn't see anything like as bad or wrong with making those jokes and that's kind of inherently I feel like what they what the members and their responses were saying is that they were trying to tell her how the jokes that she was making weren't okay and she wasn't receptive of that. And now it still in a way does not really feel like she is receptive of that. And I'm not saying that Zion is 100% at fault and that no one else, you know, no one else did anything. But the fact that it's just the fact that she, it really feels like she is not taking any accountability. There's like no sense of accountability. Like if you are in this, you know, you're in Niji and you have people that you've met in, you've met in real life together, you seen each other, you're friends with each other, you're friends with each other, why would multiple people, more than one person, two people, Finana and Kotika, turn their backs on you, backstab you, why would they do that? Why? For no reason? How would they do that for no reason at all? There has to be a reason for that. And you aren't acknowledging the fact that you may have made a mistake to make them feel that way, to make Kotika feel that strongly about quote unquote backstabbing you. There has to be a reason for that. Why would Kotika say it for no reason at all? How, why would she? No, like, oh, like, if you, like, if Zion just left on normal terms i don't think kotika would say that why would she say that but you know there has to be re a reason for those things it just doesn't make any sense it makes no sense how there would be no reason that they would just turn their backs on her and backstep her for absolutely no reason at all that just makes no logical sense no sense at all makes absolutely no sense 
and I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be neutral on this, but it's just, um, you know, I don't want to, like, feel like I'm, t you know, you guys, to feel like I'm taking sides on this, but I'm just kind of speaking logically and, and neutrally, just saying as, like, someone in the middle saying, like, okay, well, how does that make sense? There's, there is two sides to this, there's two sides to each story, and, um, you know, Seiyu is saying her story, but I feel like it's, she's undermining her side of things in the sense of like her actions and what she specifically did and I think it, it does kind of show a fact that the way that she described herself and the way that she described the jokes that she was making as just like these nuts jokes and it's like oh well the, the company couldn't handle my, my these nuts jokes it's like it was not just these nuts jokes it was not at all that it was like if it was just these nuts jokes i feel like people wouldn't have you wouldn't have suffered as much backlash for that it's because the jokes that you made were crossing the line and weren't okay and were hurtful to people is the reason as to why people are upset with you if you're if the way that zion like the way that say you is, is she's saying that that you know, that she, in order for her to be herself, is to make jokes at the expense of other people, or that she can't, like, filter herself at all, that's inherently a you ish a you thing, that's a you issue, and it kind of, in a sense, kind of shows that you don't care about other people, you don't care about people's feelings, you know, that, that people are telling you that, oh, what you said really hurted me, and really affected me, and potentially brought traumatic experiences back to me, and for you to basically just say, oh, well, it was just a joke, or it was just a these nuts joke, just shows that inherently a sense of not taking accountability, a sense of not caring about what how another person feels. That was actually the same thing. There's a reason that she was one of the few people that, like, Zion collaborated with alone, like, in a solo collab, is because, you know, she met up with her in person, had a good time together at, like, a music festival, you know? I couldn't believe what, I couldn't believe what she said, honestly. This indie VTuber going on to elaborate on the difference between how she had returned and now other VTubers who have left the company, with those VTubers having months to prepare for their exit. A lot of the people on the internet just go, why didn't I just wait to come back? Okay, well, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty simple, right? Like, it's, it's literally, it, like, th th there's really no real discussion on this. The reason why there was months in advance of preparations because she was terminated and they weren't they graduated so obviously they left on okay or or decent terms because they obviously you know they, they left on their own accord but zion was terminated so obviously there is a huge difference between zion and every other en graduation there's a huge difference, an insanely huge difference between that, you know? And let's we'll just say this, okay? Other members graduating does not inherently mean the company's bad. It may just mean that a certain talent in the company may just, it may not just not fit them. Maybe there's some create, there's some creativity um, differences. Because with you go, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was just based off of um, creative differences. It was a graduation. It was not a termination, you know, and I think that, you know, say you and was well, Zion and you goes like graduation and termination, completely different, completely different, um, completely different circumstances. Don't even think they're really comparable. Um, you can kind of just see in the nature of the graduation and the termination, there's huge, there's a huge difference between that. And, you know, it's, and some, um, VTubers graduate on good terms and don't have a graduation stream. 
you know, like, um, Vespa Magni. They didn't have a graduation strip. I don't think they left on bad terms or anything. I think that they just decided that, you know, renewing the contract just wasn't what's best for them. And I think that that's inherently kind of just what happened with the three members that have graduated. Um, Mr. Nina and Yuko. I just think that it, like, you know, Mr. and, and Nina was burnout. More, most likely burnout. And the company just wasn't the right fit for them. And for Yugo, I, I think Yugo, it was like creative differences within the company. And comparing that to Zion's termination, there's a huge and healthy, massive difference between that. That's not even comparable. You can't even really compare your termination to anyone's graduation because th those aren't even comparable. They're completely different situations, insanely different situations, you know? Like, I don't think you can compare them. Back with, like, a full model and everything, you know? Like, could I afford that after what that what happened? No! I couldn't wait after the lawyer and all the stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of the people genuine enough to tell Corpo to go f*** themselves. But then I, I, at the end of the day, I have, like, nothing, you know? Like, I appreciate you guys a lot, and I don't want you guys to think I don't, you know? It's, it's definitely not that. Synchronicity continuing on to elaborate about the time when she was accepted into Nijisanji English. You know how happy I was when I saw the email, you know? Wouldn't you be happy when you see an email that says, like, you know, some big corporate name, right? You would think, oh my god, they wouldn't email me for anything aside from accepting me, you know? Like, I was having a house party at the time, you know, with, with a bunch of IRL friends, you know, music, music, rhythm games players and I like ran down the stairs and I just like held up my phone to everybody with the email and I was just like you know first I saw this and then I saw this you know in my email I saw like one notification and I was like oh my god and then they were all like holy sh you know and it felt like I let all them down I told my parents I got into a good company you know and then I let them I felt like I let them down I mean not like they care really they don't you know which is nice you know but I could find I mean yeah like obviously you know that there's that thing yeah I, I, I feel just you know I think feel bad for her for that you know um having such a massive opportunity and but then you know um feeling you know that you disappointed yourself that you disappointed your family disappointed your friends and i don't you know everyone makes mistakes you know everyone um does make mistakes and you know it is about i think it the the thing how it goes is how we move on from those mistakes and i i, I think that it i think it just was that she just wasn't the right fit like, I just think that inherently, the way that she is, the way that she talked about, the way that she, like, makes jokes, doesn't want to change, inherently just shows that she should not be a corporate VTuber. Because she, she is basically saying she's not going to change for them, which inherently, you kind of have to. You have to change in a, to a certain extent, or at least just put a filter on yourself um, when you are in a company. If you are unable to do that, then you should not be in a company. You should not be in one at all. And I don't know, like, how she doesn't get that or gauge that or, like, not even want to, like, make that change in herself. And I think it just kind of shows that, you know, obviously, to, to a certain extent, can feel bad for her. But at the same time, it is inherently her fault that she didn't want to make that change. She didn't want to make the change in order to stay within the company. Um, which... You know, if she wanted to keep to her own, I don't know, she wanted to make her own jokes, I guess. Um, she didn't want to feel filtered or she didn't want to feel pushed down by the company's standards. And that, to me, just shows you should not be in a company. Um, but, you know, I think, yeah, I, I feel, I'm sorry that she, you know, that she felt like she's disappointed herself, that she's disappointed her friends or her family, but inherently at the end of the day, I think you have to take some responsibility for that. And I really just feel like she is not taking accountability. Like, there's, I just don't feel like she's taking that much accountability at all. It was nice to finally tell my parents, like, oh, hey, you know, that I finally found something that I could do that, you know, a big company is willing to back me up on. Yeah, it's like a you're great confirmation. It's like having somebody who, like some big group of people who have a lot of experience say, hey, we, you, we think you have something special. You know? yeah. We think you're cool yeah. and that you deserve to be around in this, you know, job or something. This now indie VTuber continuing on and elaborating on her unfinished plans within Niji Sanji. Yeah, I was really sad because like I had this huge, I had this cute 
cute little thing planned out for for Valentine's Day, and then I didn't get to do it. Uh, and you know what really sucked is that honestly, I watched back a lot of my streams, you know, and I knew I already knew, but I watched back a lot of my streams. A lot of my streams, you know, a lot of Zion streams were some of my most creative times. Like I was so, I felt so much motivation. I was like, I can finally show people the world, you know, what I can do, what I have, you know, and I felt so excited and I was so like, my brain was going like miles an hour during each collab, during each video. I would think so much about what I'd say. I'd think so much about what was happening on the screen that I was making jokes, writing jokes in my head as I was streaming, like left and right, you know, and I was so excited. I was like, I can do this. This is what I was doing, you know, like I was so happy to show people what I could do. Now with a few alerts kicking off in the background, she would speak to limitations in the job. A lot of things were out of my control and a lot of things were within my control and I still f***ed it up and I, it made me, it still makes me feel really bad because how can I have confidence in myself thinking I f***ed up the dream that I wanted, right? But then at the same time, it wasn't the dream I wanted, right? Can't make these nuts jokes? Huh. I don't know if I could live that way. <laughs> so maybe- Like, what do you mean? Like, there's literally proof that that's not true. That, that, that is literally, literally proof that that is just not the case. You did not just make these nuts jokes. You are undermining and what you did. You're undermining the jokes that you made. Like, you're not taking accountability. I thought for a second she was taking accountability and she turned it around and just said, oh well, you know, the, the company can't let me make these nuts jokes. It's like, no, like, what? The, you're, like, no. No, like, if that, if that was the only thing that was the issue, that, that just wouldn't be the case. Like, come on. Like, are you kidding me? Are you serious? Like, you are just not taking accountability. Like, there's just no accountability being taken. You did not just make these nut strokes. There's literally proof. Literally proof. Clips of you crossing the line. And then this shows that you don't take accountability. And you are not sorry for making those jokes. It's inherently is the reason why you're in this situation in the first place is because you don't take accountability for your actions. You're not learning. You're not learning from your actions. You're not changing as a person. And that is literally what the members of XLA were saying in their responses was that they were trying to talk to her and she didn't listen. And this literally shows that you aren't listening and you're not taking any accountability from how long it has been, how long it has been since you have left, since the thing happened originally. No accountability, no accountability at all. Not listening to people and inherently, I don't even think like, you know, it was necess it wasn't hate. It was literally back with backlash because what you said was messed up, was fucked up as hell. And people were telling you within your own community were saying, hey, I was hurt by this. You know, it is traumatic for me. It can bring back trauma, you know, and you undermine that by saying it's a, it's a nuts, it's a these nuts joke, it, I, which I think is incredibly insensitive to the people that were hurt. And I think it shows, in a sense, a lack of caring for the audience, you know, for the fan base. That what you don't give a shit, you don't give a fuck. That you care more about, like, being unhinged and making your jokes over your own fan base and over the community. You care more about that. You care more about making your jokes than the safe, like, you know, than your, your fan base feeling safe than the than the Niji fan base feeling okay and feeling safe in your streams? How can you say that? That's so fucked. Like hello? Hello? I'm sorry, but like can you like hello? Like th there's no accountability being taken. There's no accountability being made, like at all. Like she is just undermining what she did. She's undermining the jokes that she made. Because if she was just making those jokes, I know not as many people would be mad at her. At all. It's incredibly disappointing. It's incredibly...
insanely disappointing. And it just shows that she still takes no accountability. And it's honestly disgusting. Maybe it wasn't the dream, you know? And before debut, Niji Sanji English experienced another member leaving with Yugo Asuma. With the then, at the time, Zion expressing how she was scared of being treated this way. You know what's funny? In the very beginning, a certain Zion said to a certain company, What is this treatment? I'm scared of being treated and ending up exactly like Yugo, right after Yugo was graduated. And then a certain company said, No, no, that was totally different. That was a... Okay. I don't necessarily get what she means by like, I don't want to be treated like you, the way Yugo was. I don't want to end up like graduating. The thing is, but you didn't, but like, no, your situations are leagues apart from each other. Not even, I don't think they're even comparable. Yugo graduated, you were terminated. There's a huge difference an insanely huge difference you go seems like they graduate on fine terms they are doing they are doing perfectly fine they are okay and who is the one who is still talking about the company to this day and still seems like they have a sour taste in their mouth because of the company you you do it's not comparable at all it is leagues apart from each other and i don't even know if you can even say that because like you know if you talk to to, to yugo i don't think yugo would say they would trade a with the same way as you i don't think i don't think so i think i think it is kind of just a you a you thing because once again like i said you didn't take accountability for your actions which led to you being terminated that's insanely different to Yugo, which I think Yugo graduated based off of creative differences, or Yugo had some sort of disagreement, or just, you know, did they just felt like they could, like, they, they felt like they could, they wanted to go and spread their rings and do things on their own, which they have done, and they have done fucking insanely well. Like, honestly, they're insane. They've done amazing. And I think in how we, it is kind of just created differences. Created differences. They wanted to be on their own. They wanted to be an indie. And they left. And they, you know, they graduated. But you were terminated. Because you didn't take kind of both your actions. That's not comparable at all. There's no comparison within that. Totally different situation. You guys are two different people. Blah, blah, blah. And what bugged her was the fact that they were like, oh yeah, you're two different people. That has nothing. You guys, they have, you have nothing to do with each other. I thought that was absolutely ridiculous because they were just trying to give some stupid company answer in order to deflect by just saying, you're two different people. Blah, blah, blah. You're two different people. And that's such an whole answer to different people, same treatment. Yeah. And now this VTuber speaking to a very infamous percentage. 2% should be criminal, honestly. Yeah, it was funny because that was something that Zion didn't want to like reveal reveal, you know, like when you reveal trade secrets and stuff, it's like, okay, that's getting in trouble, right? But she didn't even have to say it, right? Which was good because a lot of other people weren't happy about that either. But yeah, that's that, that was 100% true. A lot of people were like, oh, you know, are the things that she's saying true? And it's like, there's so much to back it up that she didn't even have to try. Like she didn't even need to like put out evidence. Like so many other people had way better evidence and that had already existed. It was hilarious. It's like, she, gosh, she didn't even even need to try which is good because she really didn't want to at that point oh man highway robbery this vtuber now currently continuing on with a subathon just hours ago tweeting thank you all for such a wonderful night tonight it was such a blessing and honor to meet so many new faces and get to know you all and have you all here with our amazing community i hope we'll have many more fun times together i'll keep trying to be better for you all that is next we have okay Okay, so that was, yeah, that was the, the Zion, um, situation. Um, I, look, I don't, like, I, I'm not, like, don't, like, you know, don't, like, hate on, on, on Seiyu. I don't, like, I don't hate her. I don't, I don't know if I think she's, like, a horrible person, it, but it's just, it's just disappointing. It just really is disappointing. I feel like things could have gone so much better. Things could have been so much different, and if she just would have taking an accountability and it just still to this day feels like she is repeating the same things again 
and that she still wasn't taking accountability at all. But um, yeah, let me know down in the comments what you guys uh, think. And if you did end up enjoying this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and joining me to our channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.